Welcome to uh, Trading Without Fear. My name is Eric. I'm currently recording this video in my garage. My fiance was telling me that I was a little bit too loud and keeping our uh, baby awake. So this video is a follow-up video from the Tesla Lamping interview. Uh, I just want to quickly make this and give a little bit of expectations of what this channel is all about. So this channel is more about my interpretation of Polly T. Webb's and Mark Douglas's trading psychology and their methodology of trading. I've never um, worked with uh, on a professional level with Mark Douglas or Polly T. Webb. Um, I have watched a lot of their videos and read a lot of their content. Um, I've also read um, a lot of the unknown books that Paula has. Um, I've spoken to Paula twice over the phone. She's a lovely lady. I'll um, put her links in the description below. And one of the books that I've read from her that's helped me a lot. Um, over the years of trading, uh, I've learned a lot about technical analysis um, through watching videos online. Um, a lot of it has been from made from Investors Underground and Tim Sykes. Um, Tim Sykes uh, has a wonderful video called The Penny Stock and Framework. That framework um, Basically, the way I describe it is human emotion painted on the screen. It's a very predictable pattern that's in the market that shows up every now and again, and you have a higher probability of uh, being able to make profits if you can identify that pattern. Um, some of the reasons also why I wanted to create a channel was to discuss some of my own problems as far as consistency within the markets and help myself looking back at these and you know, figure out what I can do by week to week basis to see if how I can actually correct those behavioral problems. Some of the problems that I have um, developed over the years is admitting that I'm wrong in a trade. Um, and if I was to not place and stop in the market as the trade is coming down, I'm taking a loss. If it violates the area on the chart where I determine that pattern has a higher probability of failure, I oftentimes will convince myself that this trade is going to be right, this pattern is going to be correct, and I just need to hold on longer. Um, when that happens, I do end up taking a much bigger loss than I originally planned on. And uh, as a chart goes up in my favor, I have a hard time um, accepting a profit because I want more money from the markets. Uh, I started using mechanical form of trading to help limit that type of behavior. Um, I can read the charts pretty well. I can identify a pattern pretty well. And uh, using the data that I've been collecting over the past several years and um, reading the Mark Douglas methodology of probabilities, I started realizing that the patterns um, have an average range of what they'll potentially meet. Um, so I go for the average high range of where the um, pattern can go to. Sometimes it reaches my, my target, sometimes it doesn't. And it all kind of depends upon market conditions and the target price that I'm going for. Um, uh, I place the OC orders to make sure that my emotions in the trade are 100% not there. Um, I tend to actually will place the trade and walk away from the computer and periodically just check it on my phone. Um, but most of the time, I, I check it at the end of the day. As long as the trade is within the um, two levels of the OC order, I kind of just leave it there. Um, over time, I can actually learn how to... I consistently take profits on the move in case for some reason it doesn't hit my price target. I can place it on a different area in the chart so that way I'm always walking away with the profit. But right now, the main thing I'm working on is um, learning the probabilities as far as convincing my mind that over time, as long as I'm sticking to this plan and sticking to a mechanical trading methodology, that in the end I'll end up becoming net profitable. Um, I've been trading. Uh, this way since December last year, and every time I stick to mechanical trading, I end up becoming net profitable by the end of the month. Um, one of the reasons why that happens is when I do take a loss, the losses are significantly smaller than the actual um, profit gain that I take. Um, because the size that I go into is between $250 to $500, my losses can be in between $10 to $30 in a trade, and my average winning prices are between or winning percentages between 40 to 60 percent. So I'm taking, you know, 150 to four to 250 dollars per per trade. Um, and over time, I've actually learned that by doing mechanical form of trading for myself, it allows me a little more freedom. Uh, I do have a young baby, and currently both my fiance and I are working at home. But in the future, she'll be working back in the office and I'll be staying at home running our eBay business and uh, full-time trading and being a stay-at-home dad. So 
by waking up in the morning, place my trades and have an ability to walk away, I'll be able to take care of my, my son and make sure that, you know, I don't have to go back to work and have a full-time job and have somebody else raise. And that's very important to myself and important to, to her as well. So that way eventually she can quit her job and become a stay-at-home mom. It's things to expect from this channel are going to be weekly updates. I'm going to try to update as much as I can as far as how I'm going, what things I need to work on, um, uh, answer any of your questions as far as if you have any questions. Um, and like always, comment, uh, like, comment, and subscribe down below. Um, I do plan on actually being a little bit more active on this uh, channel going forward. Um, and trying to help as many people as I possibly can. Some of the things that you need in order for mechanical trading to actually work properly is you have to learn how to identify an edge. An edge is nothing more than a pattern or some sort of methodology that you use to trade the markets. If you're randomly trading, um, mechanical trading is not going to work. Uh, you do actually have to be able to identify a consistent pattern in the markets, track the data, and get the, the full probability of the move. In the future, I'll actually be showing a little bit more about my um, tracking and how I gather data, how I actually gather data for a new setup and a new plan, and um, how do you actually utilize that data to make uh, mechanical trading successful. Um, some of the things that I don't do compared to some other traders is I do not use uh, news. Um, over time, I've learned that the news gives me a bias on a trade. And I don't want to have any reason to stay into the trade if it's going against my position. So for me, I'm a 100% technical trader. Um, I don't know why the stock is moving half the time. I have no idea what's causing the move. And um, Mark Douglas and Paul T. Webb teaches that you don't need to know why something is trading successfully um, or why you're actually profitable. And there's no way to really find out, which I have kind of realized over time that that's very true. Um, there's times of where news will come out and it's very similar to another chart that has ran up quite a bit on the day or on the week and it's the same bit of information but for some reason that stock doesn't move and when I buy into those stocks in the past I end up taking a pretty big loss because I had to convince myself that there is no risk on the trade it's going to do the same thing as the previous pattern. Over time I actually um, stopped trading with the news uh, I only trade the setups that are on the penny stock and framework um, so I would actually, you know, start off with those two things if I was, a uh, if I was starting all over again. Some of the things I wish I would have done as a newer trader was take, um, tracking, uh, data more seriously. Um, you know, in the past, creating an Excel spreadsheet seemed like it was a daunting task, especially because I never knew how to use Excel. Um, and I had to, you know, sometimes spend hours trying to create algorithms and formulas in Excel spreadsheets. Um, then YouTube can actually help you out and and uh, teach you how to use Excel. So I would actually um, go back and start tracking my trades a lot earlier on. And um, another thing is, is I would have probably stuck to one setup. Um, the market, the patterns that show up in the market are based off of personality, in my belief. Um, sometimes a person will try to trade patterns that their personality doesn't really suit very well um, for myself I wasn't really comfortable with trading dip by patterns morning dip by patterns which is one of Tim Sykes favorite patterns I know it's a great pattern I know there's a lot of people out there that make money from it if, if you can't clearly identify a pattern um, the way that I think now is it probably doesn't suit your personality um, so you know, if I could go back, I would probably just focus on patterns that I can clearly recognize in the market and stick to those patterns, track data. Um, don't be lazy. Um, you know, I think I would have been a lot further in my trading career if I wasn't so lazy and uh, actually created, uh, you know, an Excel spreadsheet to, to track the information I was doing, to track the data, to track the plans and the patterns. And, you know, another thing is, is, um, if I could go back in time, I would probably also keep a, a trading workbook, which is basically a um, trading journal or trading diary about your emotional state. Um, the way it works is when you get into a trade, you'll put down the date and the ticker, and you'll just start to write down your thoughts and feelings while you're before you get into the trade. You know, you'll write down like whether or not you get a good night's sleep. So if you have a headache, if you're feeling good, if you're feeling sick, if you're excited for the day, if you're you know kind of frustrated for the day. 
And once you enter into a trade, you'll start to write down your processes and your thought processes, um, you know, whether or not you're afraid that the market's going to take your money away or you think that it's going to not reach your target price or um, just various different things. And keep a journal of that. Um, when you review your trades, and I do recommend for everyone to review their trades at a minimum of once a week. Um, when you do that, also review your trading workbook. That'll actually help identify various different state of minds that you have in the market and help identify some things that you can work on. Um, when using mechanical trading, I still write down my, my thoughts and feelings in my workbook. Um, sometimes I find myself removing a stop or placing my um, target sell price up higher because I do have a problem of uh, wanting more money from the markets. Once I recognize that, when I write it down, I put it right back down to where I, um, my data says I can actually take a profit at. Over time, as I start to feel more and more confident in the way that I trade and how it actually proves to me that by the end of a data set or by the end of the month, I become not profitable. I'm basically green um, since December. Uh, that also helps me have a little bit more confidence in the way that I trade.